Yep. Oh, okay. Amazing, you know. Okay, it's uh, seven fifteen. This is the meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals, Thursday, October sixteenth, two thousand fourteen. <clears throat> We're in the Littleton Town Offices, Room One Hundred Three, Thirty Seven Shattuck Street, Littleton. <clears throat> I'll call the meeting to order. So, my first order of business under administrative matters is. Minutes, and Shelley said we don't have any minutes this week to review. We got pretty caught up last meeting. And accounts payable. I didn't see any accounts payable either, so that's good news. One thing I wanted to ask, since we are televised and since it's a new dawning, um, some of the other boards pledge allegiance to the flag as they're opening to the meeting. Does anybody have any thoughts on whether this board might or should or wants to do that? I Personally, I've not seen that done in any zoning or planning board meeting because it's a public hearing and it's not a meeting of the general public. <coughs> is, planning board does it. Is it related to being televised? I don't know. Hmm. It's not related to being televised necessarily. It's related to passion I'm feeling this year. You say no. And you say no. Start at the meeting. It's my opinion, but. Okay. I don't care. We may raise it again at another date. We may get no feedback objection. just having said it on the air. Maybe we'll get some feedback. I have no objection. Anyone no, else? No want objection. To, no objection. Anyone else want to weigh in? If if uh, if you if we have time for this, um, I just want to make a little comment about the Littleton housing production plan, oh, please. which there is a draft that's been issued. And did you get a copy of that? Yes. Okay. So <coughs> and you have one to anyone wants it then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is it online? And it's online. Yeah. I'd also like to say publicly that the lottery is open for the Omni 40B for sale and for rent units. And I have not been able easily to get an application, but they can be had by contacting the, um, the administrative secretary here. Then there's a phone number. You can go on the website. There's a phone number to call to get a lottery package mailed to you. And there is going to be an informational hearing at the Cooper Room of the Littleton Library. And I think it was Saturday, October 25th at 2 p.m. And while we're talking about the Omni, um, I ran into Leslie French, and she mentioned that they, they have aerial photography every few weeks of the site, and it's uh, posted on their website. I don't know if it's a special 15 Great Road website or if it's an, the Omni website, mm -hmm. but. I could probably ask her if we could have a link to it. Yeah. Please. Please. Great. The yeah. Wildflower Meadows lottery information is all on the 15 Great Road page. Of, of, the little of their website. Of our website. Oh, Littleton your website. website. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe we could a link to the aerial mm -hmm. photography. Yeah. But I was told the materials to apply are not there. They have to be mailed to people. Oh, the could you possibly print out one for us? And I'll come by and pick it up in your office. I had one mailed to, the, to one applicant recently. Okay. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is the applications. We did a very good job, I think, of trying to make these applications more consistent with other communities and consistent with what other of our boards are using for applications. But when I was trying to sort through the materials for this meeting, I had a couple of comments that are confusing to me, and I think Bill's had a couple for a while, too. <clears throat> so first of all, in the front page, we have the petitioner's address, and we have the property owner's address, <clears throat> but we don't have the address of the property we're talking about. <laughs> so that needs to be more prominently displayed somewhere. If I can make a suggestion, I mean that should be the very first thing. And you know, there are three three parts of this. Um, it can be three different parties. It can be all the same. It should be the property in question, then the petitioner, and then the property owner. Yeah. Um, um, no, and, and that was suggested way back when. But we're trying to simplify to get everything on one page, and somehow that that get eliminated in error. Oversight, whatever. Well, we have a blank one here. I'm just going to put property, colon, 
And then but, I think you can squeeze the space in a little bit so that it still fits on the Yeah, you know, it's just like with, down the bottom we have the sources map files and everything else. Um, that should be tied in with a property address and all up together in the same spot. So I think that should move up and the petitioner on the property already should move down. I can show you a form from another town that has worked very well for many years. And That's fine. The, she, can, she can do it. She can just move things around. Um, the deed reference book and page should probably be with the assessor map and parcel number two. So the decision writer isn't looking all around yeah. the application for when that information needs to be put in. I'm just going to pen this one up and hand it back to you. And then the other thing I didn't like is on the page two where it says what they're applying for, people have been a little better about putting the chapter, the, the section of the bylaw that they're referencing, but there's no description of what it is. So you have to go from there and then you have to paw through the application <coughs> and ask them if they've even bothered to include in the narrative what it is they're asking for. So I'll, I, I might point out on one of them tonight, I'm not really sure, uh, wasn't really sure what they were looking for when I went to view the property. So, you, didn't, you, you didn't give me the, the paperwork I already picked up, did you? And I didn't bring it. You don't have the extra copies, do you? You can let me peer over one. your shoulder. Sure. L leading to what you just said, no, part of the instruction, right away I said, here's the information that needs to be submitted. And even in the sections of the second page, it says you're going to give a statement in regards to what it is you're asking for and how do you meet all the criteria for either whether it's a special permit or for a variance. No, it says that, but people I don't read anymore. Why well, do you think people read? Well, no one's got time well, to read. Well, I, I, unless you text it and you use acronyms, they'll read it. But the other thing is it says you no know, incomplete information may cause a delay in the hearing. And no. Uh, so we never Then we need to go back and. So what I want to suggest is that there be a line inserted here that says brief description. The outside of the air road. I guess I learned a lesson. Okay. Do you have another comment on that? Flood road may not have an Does flood road not have an outside because we have a fast? We're still talking about these right now. Okay. Sorry. We're not open on 8 Blood Road yet. When no, we're I was opening, asking you can ask. Shelley, a question about paperwork. I'm not sorry, but we're the... talking about revising the uh, application right now. Just wait a minute. Um, brief description here, and then anybody have any other comments that they noticed on this? Do you have an English? Okay. For now, <laughs> that's some modifications to the application. Okay. Okay, now you may ask a question. Shelley, does Ake Blood Road have a new outside an application? Or did you not know? Because it was last week. Last week. Okay. I just couldn't find it, so I didn't know if it had it or not. Thank you. There's a letter, the, the, all the supplemental information is emailed on Friday. There's a letter from the attorney, the new plans. Okay, uh, I got that. Thank you. Okay, we're not open on the blood road yet. Anybody else have any administrative matters to discuss? Do you have everything? Patrick, the material we picked up last week when we drove by the uh, houses, yeah. you didn't get again. And I didn't bring mine with me, so you might need to look over Mark's shoulder on Gristmill and Dogwood and Goldsmith, because I, because I didn't bring it. Okay. Where's we, Rod's we, stuff? Where's Rod's? Oh, no, I thought I picked up mine. Oh, Rod's not here. You can pass that down. Why don't you give it to Patrick? That way he has it. Patrick and I picked up the materials last week and went and drove by all the properties and talked although, about them. Although Rod could come in late still. Thank you. you don't mind me appearing, do you? So. I, I have two loose plans. Were they attached to Roland's comments, do you think? 
Uh, the top one just came in today. That's the stamp plot plan for eight blood rows. Okay. And then those. Um, that's a septic last system. Four, that's for the Goldsby Street one. Um, Fine. With the septic and Thank you. Okay. Let's see what we have from any last meetings that we haven't caught up on. Oh, one thing that went around by email, I think, were decision draft samples from Bill Farnsworth. Has anybody had a chance to look at them, use them, or work with them? Any comments to them? Downloaded them and put them in the file. So it would be good for you to have them, so if somebody yep. has a decision to write and they ask you how to do it, you can send them that template. <clears throat> oh, I just found mine. <clears throat> Anything else? We can uh, take a breather for three minutes then until the uh, appointed time for the continued hearing of Eight Blood Road. Would anyone like a glass of water? Yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Want a glass of water here? Yes. Yes, please. Um. I don't know. I have it twice now. Oh, that was Shelly gave it to me. Um. I was going to ask you another question about. Oh, I know. About the minutes, I had a thought. I don't know if it's worth trying. It seems like when we get the minutes, they stack up because we run out of time to review them. And it often feels to me like Bill is doing all the work reviewing minutes. Would the board be agreeable to, we'll take turns being the minute reviewer for the next meeting. So it would force whoever's turn it is to read them completely and make edits to them. Not to say that Bill and others can't also review them, but at least that way it'll kind of force everybody to take a minute and review the minutes. What do you think? Yeah, right. You might be disappointed when I review them. No. Not at all. I think typing. I think I think we should give the applicant the responsibility of typing the decision. <laughs> all right. Yeah, that would work. <clears throat> So you're proposing that we just take turns on minute review, like the next set of minutes that comes in, we'll start at one end of the table or the other and say, <coughs> you're the primary reviewer. Everybody else can or we could, review. you either get to write a decision or review, or review minutes. minutes. That's fair. Yeah, and we'll take turns. We'll just I'll review minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just go uh, in order. All right, am I close enough to 7.30? Sure, it's 7.30. Okay, the time is 7.30. We're calling case number eight. Excuse me, wrong one. 7.30. We're calling the continued hearing of 8 Blood Road, the case of Joyce Joseph Royal for a special permit from section 17310B1 for a proposed addition at 8 Blood Road, case number 839A. I see Mr. Royal is here with counsel, and we have a uh, amended package that was submitted for this hearing. Um, Attorney Kate, and I'll tell you the procedure here is that you come forward with your client. You can sit formally or informally, introduce yourselves, uh, state your case, and when you are done, the board will ask questions. You'll have a chance to reply to the questions. When that's done, we'll ask if the, we'll read any letters we receive. Building inspector comments. We'll ask the abutters if they have anything to say, <clears throat> and then back to you again. And this board is um, fairly informal, but keeps some decorum. Right, Thank you. I'm Michael Kate, representing um, the petitioner Joe Royal and his wife. Actually, is not here tonight. Um, I um, want to just start by saying I appreciate the help the board has given my client before I was involved, which just was as of last week. And I also apologize in our haste to, to get a, uh, a document before the board um, last week. I was, for some typos, um, I made uh, 
few pages, uh, pages three, there's only one real substantive issue in that, uh, in that change I'd like to point out, is that on page three, in paragraph 3B, where we're uh, explaining about having uh, to go over uh, the septic system if, the, uh, if a garage was uh, hypothetically located in the front of the house, it says uh, down towards the, um, the, the end of the second paragraph here, uh, turnarounds by vehicles would be possible without driving over the septic system. That should be would, would not. And that's the only substantive type of. There's some others if the board want. We made copies of uh, the few minor entitled to that changes if you'd like. Give me. Why don't you go through it? Okay. Um, you know, what I'm going to suggest is why don't you go through it with a narrative and why don't you give a copy of the corrected one to the administrative system to put in the okay. we'll do that. Basically, I have to um, I appreciate the board's uh, assistance to my client relative to the fact that this started off being a special permit, where it's really uh, um, remained to be a, um, a variance proceeding instead. Uh, as has been pointed out in this narrative here, the uh, notice that went out in the paper said special permit slash variance. So I don't believe we have an issue uh, with the propriety of the proceedings now being amended to a variance. So uh, in, the, in the first page, I just set out uh, the, uh, the, the current uh, non-conforming with zoning. Uh, this is a non-conforming, a legal non-conforming lot at this point. That's short on some, uh, on some lot area as well as frontage. We actually now comply with the sideline setbacks, the current sideline setbacks of uh, 30 feet on one side and 17 feet on the other. And the proposal is to put a garage on the property. Um, the garage has been designed to be a narrow uh, one where the cars sit in tandem front to back. And uh, the board suggested making this a 14 foot uh, um, wide garage, which is the standard. Uh, to make it 14 feet inside, the structure itself has to be 15 feet wide, as, can, uh, as made out on the narrative here and on the plan that was submitted after the narrative was provided to you. Um, it is a, it leaves only a four foot var um, distance between the boundary line, I believe it's the northeast, with uh, probably now a formerly of Matheson. Uh, it should be also pointed out there is a, uh, a bump out with the chimney, by the chimney, uh, that, that's actually the nearest current point to the sideline boundary. And that leaves interior, the interior less than 14 feet, it's only 12 feet inside the garage based on the current plan. Now, this is a very narrow lot. It's uh, abutted by very large lots uh, on either side. Uh, they're both forested. They're former seasonal camps. They're no longer used as such. Across the street, I don't know the size of the lot, but it's a forest and farmland across the street. So there's virtually no one uh, in the direct vicinity of this property. So that uh, anything we did in terms of a variance here doesn't uh, create a density issue in that neighborhood because it's not really a um, uh, well-populated um, neighborhood in that particular position. The uh, not, lot being narrow and the soil conditions uh, uh, create a very tight space with the septic system. Right now there is a turnaround uh, uh, in existence, and that would basically be gone if we, were the, if we put the garage in the only other space that is almost possible, which is in the front of the house. That would uh, also detract uh, from not being able to see the house from the road. It also makes it very difficult uh, to avoid going over some parts of the septic system to turn around and get out of a garage of that sort. And if I was, I was projecting out a little bit where this would be situated to avoid uh, the septic system and also be able to um, allow access to a garage. And it would, I think that, um, I firmly believe I should say, that such a garage would still uh, would require to be within 10 feet of the sideline, so that would be a variance anyway. So no matter what we put a garage on this property, no matter what we do, it would need a variance from the 15-foot sideline setback. So um, I think the board agreed uh, last week that a garage uh, in this environment is a necessity. So there is a hardship uh, involved here if there were not to be a garage permitted on this property. I think we made out in this uh, uh, amended uh, application that uh, this garage can't go any place else except on that side. 
primarily because of the septic system, which that could not go anyplace else on this property. You can't go in the back near to the lake. Uh, there's only so much room in the front of the house. Uh, so that's the shape of it. The topography uh, would, permit a garage, would prohibit a garage in the back, plus the fact if the garage were in the back of the house with the, garage, with the driveway going past the house on the right-hand side, there would be flood insured uh, requirement there too. Uh, so we have the um, uh, hardship, we have uh, the shape and topography of the land and the soil conditions, all mitigating uh, 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 any reasonable reason to uh, forego allowing a variance on this, on this situation. So as far, as far as I make out, pursuant to the statute and the bylaw, uh, the plan that we have here, and the necessity for a drawing on the garage of the situation, we do have all the grounds for a variance in place. Board members? Questions? Yes. Your drawing shows 17 feet. You keep talking about 15 feet. Which is it? Okay, well, it's 17 feet currently from the bump out of the, uh, of the chimney. So that's the closest point of the house to the sideline. The projection of the garage is 15 feet wide from the house. So oh, I see. Different. You're saying the property closeness to the property line is 17 feet. That's the current time, and we're, put, we're talking about if we put a 15 foot, um, ex and that's on the exterior, so it makes it 14 feet in the interior. So if we have a 15 foot structure, we're within four feet of the line. And I would offer a correction. This board never said that a garage is a necessity. We don't. Garages are nice to have in New England. We did not say that they're a necessity. Uh, with all due respect, when I was watching the film, it said... This, I said all God's have. children should have a garage. Have However, okay. I, there I, are I, lots I, of houses in Littleton and in this vicinity who do not have garages. Okay, I apologize for misparaphrasing that. That's all right. What, what is a bioclear? That is, um, if I'm not mistaken, it's one of the vents. It's a special kind of vent for this kind of uh, septic system. Am I correct about that? Candy cane. Uh, you know, it's actually, um, it sort of filters the sludge, it sort of rinses the sludge, and then re okay. the, uh, the So it's like a septic tank, or? Uh, no. Okay. Um, it's like an additional okay. cleansing mechanism. It is above ground, though. It's it is above ground, yeah. Is that, an, is that a component of an IA septic system? Is that an, an alternative septic system yes, to, to conventional? So it, it's a kind of, because of groundwater, and I think they have nitrogen loading over in this area too so that's the kind of septic system he was required they were required to put in that home as I recall it's because close to the lake. it's close to the lake and they have to make sure that nothing gets into the lake and, it works and, and I also want to clarify so the previous plan from last meeting was an 18 foot wide addition that's correct and now it's 15 feet because after the plot plan you didn't have as much room as you thought exactly okay so I'd like to point out to the board about requiring a plot plan. I noticed that when it was resubmitted, and I defer to you. Is that like an I told you so? Yes. yes. No, it, we, we, <laughs> but we, we, we try to work with anyone who comes before us, but in situations like these, it's, you know, the building commissioner would have required it. That, that's why we asked you to continue and go back, though, on this one, because it was so close. Um, you're now proposing that the uh, sideline setback at the worst point be reduced from 15 feet to 17. 4 feet? 4 feet is correct. 17 well, feet. Well, 15 feet is our bylaw. From from no, from 15 feet. That's the, that's the variance you're requesting. Our bylaw allows 15 yep. feet. Okay. You had comments, Bill? Well, I, I, you know, I, I don't know if it, it's been clear, but the lot is non-conforming because it's undersized. The frontage is non-conforming. Other than that, the house where it's located is conforming to all the setbacks. Yeah, if there was anything being done that did not create a new non-conformity, it would be a special permit. In this case, they're adding on an addition that creates a new non-conformity. Um, based on the conversations from the last hearing <coughs> and everything else, you know, things are much clearer because we had the plot plan with all the dimensions and accurate on him. <coughs> um, and it's also no, noted that the size of the garage was reduced in size 
from 18 feet wide to 15 feet wide, which gives you that four foot space from the edge of the building if built to the property line before with one feet. So that, that's an improvement. Here. Over the last week's submittal. Yeah. Last month's. Last month, sorry. Yeah, over the, the initial submission. The back corner of the proposed garage is very much into a hillock, a small hill. Are you proposed that pro projects off of your property onto the neighbor's property? Are you pro planning to put that corner of the garage underground, basically? Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I haven't really thought that far ahead. <clears throat> uh, could I ask a different way? When I went there today, there was a stake with a pink ribbon on the top. What does that stake denote? The property line or the edge of garage? Um, I don't think either. I think that was the site he used to look at the other building. Oh, okay. So that wasn't and I don't think that that's the... So one of the things that's of concern to, I think, uh, Ms. Cowley and myself when I looked at it today is that it appeared that a 15-foot wide structure would be so close to the lot line, which then has at that back corner a, a very noticeable hill or grade change. So the only way to construct it would be to impact the grade change at that back corner. You know where I'm talking about? And <clears throat> the concern is that that might not be your property. I don't know where your property line is, but whether or not the owner of that property is an absentee uh, seasonal owner or a landowner who never comes, you just can't go on his property to construct this thing. And I'm not convinced that if you take away a grade change on your own line, you're going to leave him with, what do they call it in the law when it, it'll collapse? Because if that's your property and you take it away, it's going to leave, it's the support, there's no support mechanism. If it's his property, you can't do it. You can't take his grade away. And I don't think you can put your garage foundation right up against dirt. Well, you he could if it's concrete. concrete. Well, you can raise the foundation. Mm -hmm. yeah, he can, ha he but, can have but that But there's, there's an issue ground. with excavation, whether it, it, you know, whether it mm -hmm. encroaches on the other property during excavation or whatever. So, so my, my thought would be, if, if the board is inclined to, to talk about this granted relief, that you're going to need to get permission of your abutter to do whatever you need so, to do um, there. Um, Irv Matheson is um, family owns the abutting property and he lives you know, two lots down. And when I first uh, uh, spoke to him about this, we walked to the site where the garage was going to be, and this was again originally going to be 18 feet. You know, and I stepped out 18 feet with him and you know, showed him where it was going to be. And he's, you know, he's like, I don't have a problem with this. Um, and, and I think that he would work with me um, uh, if there was some, an issue. No, this is this would require a building permit. And under the building permit process, the building codes and the building inspector will be looking at. And there are protections for the, the budding property. You cannot discharge excessive water onto the property that's currently there. You cannot slope it such as it goes onto the abutting property, et cetera, et cetera. So there are protections under the state building code and the code enforcement by the um, building inspector. But we've often worried about a setback that's so small that you practically can't get around it yes. to paint and yes. maintain it. Yep. And that's, that and that's, fair, yeah, that's fair to be worried yeah. about I mean, that. That's, I'd love to grant these kinds That's of why I noted that you know, it did go from one, that was a comment last month, and now it's, down, it's increased to four feet. You know, to me, that's absolute minimum. I know in the past we've talked about shed being three feet, but I think four feet is absolute minimum, or you know, it could be a little bit more mm -hmm. so. But, uh, there's limitations. Yeah. There's going to be a lot more engineering done here because this conservation commission is this is within a hundred foot buffer, so there's going to be a lot more engineering in terms of drainage and runoff. Uh, there's going to have to be compliance with that. Well, it might have to be Could, could you? Um, do you think it'd be possible to get a written note from the Mathersons? Well, in fact, yeah, well, that's, that's not. That's, that's, not, that's, not, that's, not, that's not. That's not for uh, here. That's not for here. From that's for the building inspector, that's for the neighbors, that's for oh, the wait, attorney to worry about. I, I think no, wait, 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 wait. What I, to me, the concern about invasion of the neighbor's property is always something we've watched out for. And by getting a letter saying that the neighbor is on board with allowing him to come on the property to build such a thing, 
wouldn't isn't that appropriate for us to ask that kind of question? The neighbors and a butter who got their notice in two fashions by the uh, publication notice and by the mail directly. If the butter wanted to be here to protest it, yeah, there's the plenty of ways to be here to protest it. We I do know. not invite. I'm just worried about this. We do not invite the the butter specifically to come in. They've gotten the same notice as everyone else. I want to read what the building inspector has um, written to this board. I think it's. Um, a repeat of last month's. I don't have it. Eight Blood Road. <clears throat> Applicant is seeking a special permit pursuant to the Littleton Zoning Bylaws, Section 173.10b1, to allow encroachment into the required side yard setback with an attached two story addition. Although the lot is legally pre existing non conforming, the structure is conforming as it meets all current required setbacks. The addition to the right side of the structure <coughs> is creating a new non conformity. I believe the applicant should be requesting a variance. No further comment. And that was addressed by Mr. Caton in the narrative when he started. I'd like to ask if there's any butters in the room or anybody interested in this application that would like to speak. I'll wait one minute for the late arrival. <laughs> anybody here on 8 Blood Road? Okay. Um, board, uh, I would entertain a motion unless you want to say something in summary. I think we've heard everything. I think it would be sort of. I'd, time I'd like to hear a motion from anyone to um, close. close the hearing. Motion, make a motion to close the hearing. Second to the motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, it is uh, 7.45, but I am going to go about five or ten more minutes on this to see if we can wrap it up. So does anybody want to make a comment about their thoughts? Do you think that the petitioner has satisfied the variance? Bill, go. You know, and I'm very, <coughs> first of all, I'm very pleased with the, the latest attack we got with the, the full narrative, um, acknowledging it is a, because it's creating a new nonconformity, you know, requesting a variance. Uh, with a plan, the land tech, land tech consultant plot plan um, is very clear, and the narrative is very clear. I agree it is a variance and not a special permit. And I think in the uh, narrative and everything else has been provided, uh, all the points under Chapter 40A and uh, local bylaw um, have been covered. I you know, acknowledge and see the points that have been made on what's unique about the site for the lot shape, soil condition with the septic system, and you know, the, the hardship that is being created. So uh, you know, I think it's well presented. Cheryl? I agree it's well presented, but I have heartburn over this one. I love granting this kind of variance. I, you know, giving people a porch, a garage, you know, when they're in a tough situation is why I'm on this board. But the shape of the land and the hill in the back, and I just, I can't wrap my mind around the fact that there's no way to build this <coughs> without, and maintain it without encroaching on other people's property. It's not a single story addition either. It's a two story addition with living space above. It's gonna need ladders that are going to need to be able to be angled. It's going, we've turned down additions closer to property lines due to inability to get ladders and whatever up there. I just have heartburn about this one. I, I, I can't, I worry about it. I think it's a little too close. I see. I hear what he's saying about the bioclear area and wanting to maintain his turnaround. I keep thinking, so his turnaround becomes <clears throat> where the where the proposed garage is, and he puts his garage out front there where the turnaround is. I, I understand that doesn't give him the finished space above for his family room, and I think he should be able to have a family room. But I have heartburn about this one. Okay. Anyone else want to comment? How about the alternates? You've heard it. Do you want to make some comments? Um, four feet, especially for a two-story house. I mean, I don't see how you can put a ladder up or get up that side. Uh, even staging wouldn't fit in there. Um, I mean, you, you, next door neighbor obviously doesn't seem to mind, but you don't know who's going to move there in the future. And we've seen other cases in town where people put iron rods in the lot line to make sure people don't go one inch over it. So. Um, you know, whether or not that's likely to occur is not great, but still, you know, we're setting ourselves up for some future issues. 
comment from anyone? I oh go ahead, Bill. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, I um, I appreciate the presentation also. Um, however, I don't know if the argument's been made about the uh, the standard that we should have for a variance. Um, it's astonishing to me that to go visit this site, you feel like you're in the middle of, you know, nowhere Maine. You know, it's just, and we're talking about a structure that's four feet from a property line, which we would not approve even in the lake area where they have 6,000 square foot lots. That's my concern. I, I don't know how we could deny uh, anyone else coming into this board for, for that kind of setback. It establishes a precedent that um, I, I'm just concerned about it too. I, I agree with you, Cheryl. It gives me heartburn also. <clears throat> John, you want to speak to it? Well, I, I, I agree with what I've heard. Um, I, I think being the two stories really concerns me. I, I might be inclined to favor the if it was a one-story garage and only a garage and not a living space over it. But if somebody does come along and build a house next door at some time and you're four feet from the property line with a two-story structure, that's awfully high up against a fence or whatever. Um, so I'm not, I'm not real, real enthused about what I'm seeing. Anyone else, Alan? No, I, I'm uncomfortable with it too. Um, but it is an odd situation. I have been down the Blood Road and I've seen the, um, this area, and um, you know, it's just like just like I was saying to Cheryl earlier. Like John, like uh, Jeff said, it's like you're in the middle of nowhere. It's a different country down there. Um, and the property over here, it's even with that property, it's almost like it's not there. The, the, the condition that I've seen it in when I saw it, I don't know, I haven't seen it recently, but. Um, it's kind of a tough one, um, particularly if the neighbor is saying, I'm okay with it. <clears throat> um, I'd, be, I'd almost be more comfortable with the neighbor, with there be, being something that the neighbor did to sort of official, make it official that it's okay to use this as some kind of an easement or something. But um, I'm just concerned any one of us who have property in town would be concerned about somebody putting something four feet next to their property line. Um, so I, it's, I'm uncomfortable with it as well. Doesn't mean I wouldn't vote if I had voting authority at this meeting. I'm not but saying I'm you uncomfortable. wouldn't vote for it, but I'm just not happy. Patrick? I, I'm worried. Nothing to say? I have none. I, I have a couple of comments. Do you want to go first? Go I, I just wanted to comment. Again, it, in, it said before, and I understand the concerns of everybody. I have the same concerns about trespassing on adjoining property. No, that's outside of the hands of this board. There are mechanisms for it. It's under the, the building permits, under the, the state building code. There are requirements in there. The building inspector is the enforcer of that. If there are any problems, it can go to the building inspector or trespassing goes to the, the local policing authorities. I know I've been down this route several times before and I know how it's handled. Um, so, yeah, there are there safeguards in there. And, you know, if you get your neighbor's permission, good. And construction wise, you know, it, it is possible to build it without trespassing. It's not very easy, but it could be done. Um, if, on another note, if we are, no, we've already accepted or heard all the testimony and the presentation, <coughs> meeting the different aspects of the zoning requirements for granting a variance. If we were to deny the variance, we need to have specific reasons as to you know, other than don't like the looks of it and want to browse it too close to the property line, we need to get more into specifics on the different criteria and how they are not met. I think we can deny it simply because it's too close to the property line. You can't deny and it just on that fact. Bill, there's no nothing in the code that specifies that you have to have a garage, or you so. have to have a or you have to have an addition, or you have to have, or the garage can't be detached, or that you encroach on your turnaround or you know there's just so many I'm reasons why the, no, the but but in, in this case the, the the reasons for the variance um i think there could be an opposing counsel who could you know rebut every 
um, assertion there is for a variance. Um, I, the, the only thing that sways me is the fact that the abutter is familiar with what's going on. Um, I, because I'm with you, Alan. If there was a someone who lived right here, they would be at this meeting, and we would definitely not grant this variance. If if there was a if neighbor there was who, abutter if there opposition. was an abutter in opposition, there's no doubt about it. So let me say a couple things that uh, that's on my mind, and they're in no particular order. The first is that this house um, was purchased recently. So the purchaser of the house knew going in there that he had a 3,000 square foot structure with no basement and no garage, and that there's zoning in every community in every town in Massachusetts. And so relative to what you've all said about does he reach the threshold criteria for hardship, um, that one has me just a little bit perplexed because it's not as if he created his own hardship, but he went in eyes wide open that this property has some limitations on having the desired garage addition. The second thing I want to say is, for the record, um, I think garages in New England are very, very important, but I don't think they're necessities. And we have often said on this board to someone who wants a garage, it's not about wants, it's about needs. Um, and this applicant has demonstrated, to me at least, a need for the garage because he's on the waterfront, he needs to pull the boat out. Um, I'm looking at a shed that's violating the property setbacks right now and might suggest that if we're inclined to give him the garage, he has to get rid of that shed so he doesn't have a setback violation on two sides. But um, uh, he doesn't have a basement. He has no place for his outdoor furniture. And we have uh, agreed on this board time and time again the properties near the lake and that have lake access like this really do need a storage place for all of the things, the toys, the lawnmowers, the boats, the skis, the jet skis, whatever they have. And it is far preferable to have them off the front lawn or the back lawn and to have them undercover where they're protected and the neighbors don't have to share the view. I'm also uh, concerned about the proximity to the sideline, but as Bill stated, that is a neighbor to neighbor, and Mark, as you even pointed out, it's a neighbor to neighbor problem. If he offends his, if he trespasses on the neighbor's property, uh, the neighbor has a remedy against that. He can put up a fence and keep him from building it if that's his pleasure. Um, I'm inclined to accept the representation of this gentleman that he spoke to his neighbor and his neighbor's okay with it. I imagine that Matheson will give him either a verbal or a written temporary easement to go on the property to construct it because he's represented. That's what he would do. So I'm not worried about the, and as you said, you could construct it in a four feet space if you absolutely had to. So I'm not so worried about that. And I am completely motivated to be inclined to grant this particular variance as much as I also don't like the proximity to the side yard for a number of reasons. This lot is covered with no other way, no other place to go. He really does have flood problems, flood, flood zone problems. He's going to have a pushback from the Conservation Commission anywhere in the 100-foot uh, um, wetlands line. Even this garage is probably going to give him a problem. He cannot go on that bioclear system on top of it. But he he could go in front cannot of the put the garage in front of the house without another variance from this board on another be. set of the bylaws, and that's not what he's here for. That's you're you're right. That's one place he could put it, uh, but he won't get uh, any additional living space out of it, and it will uh, completely conceal his the front of his house. <coughs> and if I told you you couldn't have a garage and you had to put the only way to have a garage is put it in the front of your house, I'm not sure I would even vote for that because. Um, I did vote for it on our street on a shed, and I've regretted ever since. It looks terrible, the shed in the front yard looks terrible. Anyway, having said all those things, um, I, see, I see hardship. Um, I don't see the garage as being so large that it's a want garage. It seems to be a need garage. We did ask him to bring it down from 18 feet, which I think was one and a half cars to the, the bare minimum, and he's accomplished that. I sort of was hoping that maybe you could, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe bump it in a foot in the back, but I'm not sure five feet's going to make me any happier than the four feet. So those, those are my feelings. 
Anybody else? Patrick. Would you be receptive to buying it? a sliver of the land next door from this gentleman. Patrick, I, I don't, I, I don't, first of all, we can't force that on this board, but I know Mr. Matheson's history and he's not a seller of land, <laughs> to my no, knowledge. He doesn't break his for, parcel up. We're so, just trying to. Yeah. And he would close. Yeah, I would, I would guess that um, Mr. Yeah. Royal has already explored options like that with his neighbor. Um, See, the hearing I think is closed. I think it's preferable to have a garage in front of your house than to have it that close and have it within the setbacks than okay. to have it that close to the property line. I understand it doesn't give him his family room above, and, I, and I'm torn because in my profession, I think that houses are more valuable and better if they have family rooms. And, and So let me ask the applicant. I know the hearing is closed, but I've done this before in the past. We apparently have mixed opinions on the board. We have in the past polled the board before taking a vote and given you the option of we can, we can reopen and continue if you want uh, to see if there's any new or additional evidence or, or pushback you want to make on this application or do you want us to put it to a vote. But I will poll the board first and then I'll give you the option of whether you think you want to go forward. And I will tell you after, I should have said it ahead of time, the five voting members are this side up to sh myself and Cheryl. These are the alternates, okay? So, um, Jeff, we have, we're just polling. Your inclination on this one? I would reject it were it not for the neighbor's um, acquiescence to it, but I'm not going to support it. I'll abstain. Uh, John? Um, I mean, I, but you, your comments were, were, were very helpful, Sherry, on, on the hardship. I, I can see the garage part of this. I'm, I'm not opposed to the garage. I'm, I'm concerned about the two-story height and the family room over it. So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that's where I'm at. Bill. In favor of granting? Cheryl. I think I'm with Jeff on this. I desperately want to say yes, but feel like I need to say no. So I would abstain because I just, I think it's too close. I think it's invasive. Even if there's no one currently living there, um, someday someone will be. And it's just, there's just no way to maintain a two-story addition. And I think that you can get a garage up front. You may lose your turnaround. You may have to use your what you'd like to be used as your uh, your garage as a turnaround, but I just I you I don't want to say no, but I don't want to say yes. Do you want to take a chance and put it to a vote? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually take my next hearing. Let you speak in the hall and come back. Can I make a point? Yep. That if there is a motion to grant, you need four favorable votes for it to pass. If there are two people who are abstaining. You will not get four favorable votes. Okay, your point is made. Point of order. Okay, I'm going to step you back. Uh, we won't take a vote right now. I'm going to step you back to think about it and discuss it. Okay, I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, for the next hearing, I'm calling the 745 hearing, case number 841A, the hearing of 94 Goldsmith Street. Arlene Martino for a special permit from section 17358 for a proposed accessory dwelling. Um, and introduce yourself and present your case, and we're pretty informal. Okay. Um, my name is Arlene Martino, 94 Goldsmith Street, and um, I live in a 1200 square foot um, house with an attached two car garage. What I want to do is build, raise the roof on the garage, build a studio in our apartment there with access to it from the outside. Um, I had a, a septic tank recently come um, and I got a, a note from the company saying that it, everything appeared to be in order from their perspective. Um, you know, the septic system is large enough to cover the addition and um, I'm going to do it tastefully so that it will um, not detract from the uh, loveliness of the 1929 house that I live in, and um, that's 
that's that's about it. Who will be occupying? Oh, it will be my you? it will be my son. And how old is your son? He's thirty four. Um, and um, see that you've reviewed the zoning bylaws, so you know that the uh, accessory dwelling requires that it be renewed every three years. Requires that you uh, can no, no longer use it on. Uh, if, if there's a change of ownership, they would have to come back here. And if there's no functional dependency of the person occupying it, it can't be occupied. So as long as your son is there, it's fine. You can't okay. use it as a rental property. Oh, okay. That's or, or anyone else related. Saying. Yeah, related to you. Anyone no, else? Yes. Be, be used by anyone else related to me? No, I no. I said your son or any. I meant to say your son or anyone related to you can occupy it, or anyone functionally dependent can occupy it. But it can't be used for a functionally dependent person that's not a um, relative could occupy it. Yes, or if you become the dependent person and you bring in like a caregiver a nurse. to take care of you, yeah. it can be occupied by that relationship. Right. But I mean, could it be someone I know who's not my blood relative who's functionally uh, dependent could occupy it? Yes, if you were caring for that person. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, or it could be a caretaker. Mm -hmm. For you, yeah. I understand. Yes. Okay. Now, um, does the board have any questions? No. Yeah. I mean, you know, even looking at the regulations and everything else, there's certain criteria. We don't have any information on several of the points that the criteria. I know you submitted a statement saying that Radar has uh, septic system has looked at the, the property and said that the septic system is functional. Well, the, um, I can show you. I don't know exactly what he said, but I can give you the, the letter that I got. So well, it says in here the Board of Health must have documented the special permit granting authority that the sewage disposal will be satisfactory provided for. No, which means that, that the system is large enough for the number of people going to be there. It is. But it's, it's for a four bedroom house, and it's only a three bedroom house. All right. And do you have that from Ratter or from no, Board of Health? No, from the or? gentleman. Um, in the building of the department, I think he was an engineer that I spoke with. Um, Jim oh, Gareffi. I thought Jim, Jim Gareffi. Yes. Septic systems weren't our purview. I thought that was no, the no, no, no. It says in here that they um, must document to us that you know that it is um, adequate size system that's for one of the, the of an family or the accessory dwelling. Well, um, you then, intend to put an addition on, so they'd have to pull the building permit, which would automatically mean a yeah. Uh, Port of health review. They're not just adding a kitchen. I'm, I'm just pointing out that you no, know, we're supposed to be going by the bylaw, and uh, and also too that you no, know, we're supposed to be should have received a site plan or something showing where the house is located on the property and showing that there is adequate parking for the number of vehicles. So let me do this for any abutters to this property that are in the room under. Our um, zoning bylaw in Littleton, accessory dwellings are allowed by special permit on conditions as follows. Either unit, either the main unit or the accessory unit, shall be occupied by one or more persons related by blood, marriage, or functionally dependent for medical or other reasons on the occupant of the other unit. <coughs> the Board of Health needs to document to our satisfaction, to this permit granting authority's satisfaction, that sewage disposal will be satisfactory provi satisfactorily provided for. Usually with accessory dwellings, the septic system, always with accessory dwellings, the septic system is reviewed by Jim Gareffi and the Neshoba Board of Health. <clears throat> if there's any question about numbers of bedrooms for the sized septic, septic system, that's taken care of at that level. <clears throat> the applicant has represented to us that Jim Gareffi has said it's a four bedroom sized system and this will be a three bedroom dwelling. Parking requirements. Two parking spaces are required for the primary and two additional for the accessory. The applicant has submitted a narrative stating that she has a circular driveway, um, two car wide driveway that leads to the garage and a circle in front of the house and an additional drive on the opposite side of the property which leads down to the back of my nearly two-acre lot, two-acre lot. And then um, we have to remind her that the certificate of occupancy for the accessory dwelling is for a period of three years. Now, having said that, 
Um, I'm going to ask the board if there are any other comments to this. If not, I'm going to read the building inspector's comment. <coughs> Applicant is seeking a special permit to allow an in-law apartment pursuant to 17358 <coughs> of the Littleton Zoning Bylaws. No further comment. And we had one letter that was submitted by an abutter. It says, we are abutters and would like to know who and the number of persons that will be occupying the proposed accessory dwelling. Additionally, what is the anticipated size of the addition and will it be attached to an existing structure? Is the addition to be used as rental unit only and not to be used in a commercial enterprise, retail, wholesale, etc.? And the answer to those questions were in the narrative, but I will repeat them. <clears throat> the uh, applicant has requested that one person occupies the proposed accessory dwelling. The anticipated size of the addition is going to be a studio apartment above the existing garage. There's going to be no new construction. So there's nothing going to be added or attached to the existing structure. Second story. Second story. I'm sorry. The new construction is over. I apologize. It's the room over the garage, but nothing is going, the footprint isn't going to enlarge on the ground. And the uh, statement, is it to be used as a rental only? It cannot be a rental unit to anyone who doesn't satisfy the criteria, blood, marriage, or functionally dependent. Oh, also, it can't be a commercial it's addition it's because it's in a residential zone. So, are there any are there any abutters to, that want to speak to this petition? Any neighbors? Okay, is everybody satisfied? I'll entertain a motion to close this hearing. Make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You want to quickly vote it? Sure. I went and looked at this property. I don't see how it could have possibly adversely affect anyone anywhere. I couldn't see the back, I couldn't find the back from driving around the roads. I drove up the driveway, I peered around the building, I trespassed all over your property. And um, I don't see anything detrimental about this addition at all to any neighbor or town. Anyone else? Would you like to make a motion then? I, oh gosh, where's the right here? Okay, I make a motion that we grant the special permit to allow an accessory dwelling pursuant to 170, section 173-58 of the Littleton Zone the Bylaws at 94 Golden Street. Uh, second to that motion, please. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Any others? There is an appeal period. There's an appeal period, but you are able to take your get your building permit before the expiration of the appeals period. So. And, and then I should come back in three years to your building. Yes. That's, that's yes. to the building inspector, not to us. Oh, oh I see. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to call. No, not because I lost my. The four Dogwood Road. This so, this is <coughs> case number uh, the time is 8 15, and I'm calling the case number 842A, four Dogwood Road. <coughs> uh, the petition of John and Tessa Kaminsky for a special permit or a variance from section 173.10b1 for a proposed addition at Fort Dogwood Road. Uh, state your case. Sean? Hi, Sean Pina. Good to see you guys again. I represent <coughs> John and Tess, Tessa Kaminsky. They're in the back row with us tonight. They've uh, been citizens, citizens of uh, Little for uh, over eight years, and they'd like to increase the size of their house now that they have two children with us. So they want to put a second floor on. The problem is the front of the house on the right front corner is only 29.4 feet from the street. It's required to be 30 feet. So we want to put a second floor on and go up. <clears throat> so we have an existing non-conforming lot that we're going to add a second floor on. It's not really increasing the non-conformity, but I have to uh, come to you guys. I'm a terrible public speaker. I haven't figured that out yet. Now, I see you have at least one of them in the room. Have you seen the plan? Do you want to come forward and see the plan? Uh, no, I, I understand that it's just less than a foot from 
from the regulation, correct? Yeah. We're, we're not I'm done. Here. Okay. <laughs> any uh, anybody on the board have any questions of this application? Of this application? I just have one question about if it's a variance or a special permit. If the special permit is granted, there's no. There's an existing non-conformity. Yeah. So that. No. no. We're doing these as variances right now. No, no, no. No, no, no. no this no. is a special, special permit. permit. No, it's an existing non-conformity. No, no. No, okay. Let me clarify. No, new non-conformity. Let me clarify. It's a special permit. Let me clarify. The existing lot is non-conforming because 8,000 square feet rather than the required 40,000 square feet. Front setback is less than 30 feet, required to be 30 feet. Those are the only non-conformities of the particular property. That makes the house non-conforming. That which is being proposed is to add a second story, which does not create a new non-conformity. Therefore, it is a special permit. If they were to create a new non-conformity, then that would be a variance. So I'm asking for a special permit, so the 21-day waiting period doesn't apply with a special permit? Yeah, it does still. Okay. It does still apply. Yeah, because with a special permit, that once a decision is filed, there's a 20-day appeal period. But you can still enact <clears throat> the, if we were to grant, you can enact the decision by obtaining a building permit. But it is still under the umbrella that if somebody were to appeal and to hold to it, it goes to a hold. But it's your risk. I understand. And I just want to be clear when, when, when how, I how comfortable that. are you with your neighbors? Is the, what the ghost inspector can give it early. In the past, he used to wait for 20 days. The building inspector can give it. But he says on his That's, narrative yeah. that the roof overhang is going to make it more. Does that count? No, because the okay. Because right now the house is 29.4 feet, which is still less than 30. He's just increasing that to 28.6. That's not creating a new nonconformity. On the side of the building, uh, the right side, the building is currently is 16.2. The roof on making overhang will be 15.4. That does not create a new nonconformity. On the other side, it's still right under 15 feet on the rear. Therefore, there are no new nonconformities even with the <coughs> roof of a hand. As indicated on the plan that was submitted by R. Wilson and Associates. If you count <coughs> the roof overhang, the new roof overhang to 28.6. The existing building is 29.4. Yeah. So, so I would call that a new nonconformity. No, 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 no. It's but de minimis, no, but it's no, a new one. No, no, no. It's, it's intensifying the nonconformity, but it is not creating a new one. It is confusing. There's a hip roof on there right now, it's, so it's there's overhang right. on all four sides. Yeah. But I, I think you'll see that I'm just keeping this, the walls straight over the other walls, obviously for structural reasons. It's, it's and then I'm just putting a 12 inch overhang back on. So I actually think that that might be a misprint on, it, on well, the. Well, the 28.6 refers to the overhang, the 29.4 refers to the wall. And yeah. You're not changing that. So. The wall staying the same. Yeah. There's a. The, the existing setback now, the, that measurement here, Sherry, is going to the I wall. There's a roof already yeah, overhanging. Okay. All right. Um, Nobody just want to speak in opposition or in favor of this? Yes? Uh, no, you got to ID we yourself. Are, Wait. You know. Stephen Foss, 7 Wait. Cedar Road, a butter to the Kaminsky's. I don't know if I pronounce it right. Mm -hmm. um, I'm totally in favor of it. I think they should uh, have the opportunity to, to grow with the neighborhood as their family is. That was a nice statement. Thank you. I'm also in a butter at 2 Dogwood Road. I'm Jen Klein, okay. and I am in favor of this addition. Thank you. We have a motion to close the hearing. Who wants to second? I second. Will. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hearing is closed. Discussion? The second story addition is very much in keeping with the neighborhood. And it's got good setbacks, even though they don't quite conform. I have no problem with this addition at all. I agree. Motion? I move we grant a special permit uh, for a second story addition to Ford Dogwood Road as described in the drawings uh, prepared by Giatino Design. Dated seven one fourteen. Is 
Is that it? Okay. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Good luck. Thank you very much. Enjoy your new Enjoy your home. Okay. Before I reopen this hearing, uh, going back now to the 7.30 continued hearing <clears throat> of 8 Blood Road, I, I want to make another sort of appeal to my board. Are we reopening the hearing first? No, I didn't reopen the hearing. Okay. We're, still in, we're still in deliberation. I didn't reopen it yet. Oh, I, I mean, well, we're still going back to that. I'm sorry, yeah, I just returned to the hearing of 8 Blood Road, but uh, to the deliberation section. I didn't reopen the hearing yet. I want to make an appeal to the board, and that appeal is this. Um, I think it's unfair to an applicant for abstentions to stand in the way of a definitive decision. And I don't think you're doing your jobs to abstain. I think that the two of you who want to abstain are not truly against this enough to vote no, or if you are, put it on the line. But let the applicant leave here with a decision that gives him That's some fair. direction. <clears throat> and I'm going to pull you one more time. My, my, I, I'm still not in favor of this, and my, my main concern is a precedent. It's, we this don't is set something precedent on this board. No. We do not set precedent on this board. And, and we say it over and over again, there is no precedent set. Every single case has an individual aspect because the next one might not have an agreeable neighbor, or the next one might not have a second story, or the next one might not need a boat. So there, there's no precedent on this point, okay? But I understand what you're saying. Two-story addition, four feet from a property line. You can be against it. I'm just asking you not to abstain so that the applicant has a direction. I also have to explain that I am an architect. I don't buy any of these arguments about this is the only way this could be built. I'm giving these problems or people like me are giving these problems all the time. And I understand that the what you came up with is simple and reasonable and works well, but people deal with limitations all the time uh, relating to the existing conditions of their property. And so th this is clouding, this is making it more difficult for me to uh, go along with this. Can My I problem is that it is just so very close to the property line. We've turned down many people that are further away from the property line for things like this. And it's not like you inherited the property or your family has changed. You just bought it. You bought it without a garage. And I think like Jeff, if you need store more storage and need, more, need another garage, you might need to lose your turnaround. You might need to find, be more in, I, I hate saying no to people. I really, really hate saying no to people. Okay, but thank you. There thank, we go. Thank you both. Uh, Madam um, Chair. Yes. Um, I don't know if I have how to throw this out there, but I, I'm wondering if the other board members would be opposed if it was just a garage and not a two-story structure. So let's let's reopen the hearing. Let the applicant who I sent out in the hall to discuss this uh, input some of their comments after being in the hall and hearing our comments, and let's see if there's any way to find a way to give them some relief that's not objectionable to the board members as this one is. How's that? So I'll entertain a motion to reopen the hearing. I can make a motion to reopen the hearing. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor of reopening the hearing for additional information and input? Aye. 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 Okay. So we, we, um, we're discussing outside the possibility of continuing, as was uh, suggested as a possibility, uh, so we could talk to the abutter and see what arrangements could be made. Um, we're thinking about easement, we're talking about uh, at this point uh, the actual owners are elderly and uh, are, um, and the son is the person who lives two doors down, or two properties down. And uh, we have discussed the possibility of approaching them and have him come in, because he didn't offer, did he? And he offered to come in, come in and speak uh, to see what we could do about uh, easing the board's concern about this closeness to the property line. Uh, and it's two acres. 
uh, and if there's, if there's a 40,000 foot requirement uh, for those two acres, that's only talking about two lots. Uh, and in that area, there is a possibility of, you know, the house may be up close to the line, but there doesn't necessarily have to be a house right there, uh, such as there is in other areas of this lake. But I think we can, um, if, with the abutters' uh, uh, help, I think we can assuage the uh, board's concerns about the proximity of the line and what would happen if other houses were going in that area. Because that, that can be prevented from the houses being too close in that area with that much land. Before we come back, like the other one's the one on the other spot. The other house is not really, the other side is impossible to be there anyway. So we're only talking about that, uh, I guess it's the north easterly side of the house. Uh, so if that's the abutter there, that property there, the two acre property. Uh, that's what we have to deal with, and I think we may be able to do that by the time the next hearing rolls around. Would I, um, given that um, Mr. Joyce's suggestion was that you uh, see if it's possible to buy a sliver. Um, would you please good. explore that or a bow tie swap so you get some more distance on the side? Because even if Mr. Matheson comes in and says that it's okay with him, I'm still hearing a little opposition on there being a two story structure that close to any lot line. So just bear that in mind. I was, if there's some pushback on actually conveying the property, uh, we had also discussed the possibility of an easement, you know, for construction, maintenance of it, uh, which would preclude another house going in there within the 15 feet, which would effectively, I believe, do what the board wants to do so they wouldn't be at one, you know, a house looking at a house and prevent that problem. So I think an easement may be able to do the same thing. It might be easier to acquire. Uh, I, for one, appreciate your willingness to keep working on yeah. this. Yeah. Okay. So we'll give you another continuance. And I'm sorry for stretching it out, but you understand the concerns of the board. <coughs> All right, so we're going to do it Thank you. November 20th. <laughs> I think I'm away. Can we move back? It's November 20th, the hearing for the 27th is Thanksgiving. Remember when I'm away? Nothing came in for November, so you go earlier in November. What if we went November 6th and we're not bumping up against the holiday? Could they, could they do anything in that time? Yeah, not around on the 6th. How about just doing the 13th? I don't, I think I'm away. Madam Chair? Yes. Um, uh, hearing what was just said here about a variance, is this something that we could make a decision on tonight based on him getting a variance of five feet or ten feet? To I mean, he's the easement. I don't think so, John. I think it's, I still think we're going to have some deliberation on it, but that was a good can, suggestion. Can this wait until December? Um, he's probably not going to construct it fast, but can let it, me just see if I'm, I'm away one of these Thursdays, what, what, and whichever what, one I'm not, we'll schedule. But the thing is, if, he, if they are willing to wait until December, because it may take more than a month to honor this out, then we may have cases when you do it on a normal meeting in December. When is our normal meeting in December? Does that work for you? Okay. When is our normal meeting in December? December is that the 18th? Christmas Day. Is that the 18th? Are we going to hold it on the 18th yeah. or are we going to move it up a week? I'll find that out before we adjourn. Why do we want to move it up a week? <clears throat> because I might not be here. That's okay. Oh, in December? December no. 18th is... No, Sherry, we're talking about not oh, December, going November. into December. Not remember no meeting in November at all. <clears throat> not meeting in November. Right. Why don't we move December up to the 11th? Why not just... Because the 18th is Hanukkah and the 25th is Christmas uh -huh. and it pushes us up against school vacation and college breaks for people, so uh, maybe... That, that happens in, in here. No college breaks are. No early. college breaks and school vacations so start before that. So we to 11th and we done. I won't be around the 11th. You're not going to be around. No. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to be that week. Could be anniversary week. Say. Mm -hmm. The 18th work, but. Mm -hmm. The 18th is tough. Well, do you want to do a special meeting some time in November, or like in two weeks or something? It doesn't give them time to do what they need to do. I know. What, what, I know. What, they are suggesting. That's why, you know, December. Are you planning to try to construct this winter? I mean, is this something that you need 
as soon as possible? There's a conservation commission uh, uh, concerns here. Right. Uh, and that's what most of the engineering issues will be. Trying to get ready for the spring. Right. Um, <coughs> but uh, I mean, we could actually be doing that together with this, but you know, we want to get... Yes. This was the first step. That's yeah, the conservation commission second step. Money. Right. All right, so we're going to skip the November meeting. Can I move the other one to December 11th? Didn't work. No, John won't be here. It's our normal meeting. It's How about the December 3rd? The 4th. Does anyone have a problem with December 4th? Well, like halfway in, between the two normal meetings. Well, the only issue is people coming in, you know, who it would preclude people who want to hit the 18th meeting because they wouldn't make it. I know, I know. It's December. Yeah. Well, I mean, if anyone comes in, we can hold a special meeting. More, you know, there's one more week before, you know, somebody really wanted to get on for November. They could go in the little sun. So there's oh. nothing yet. Well, well there might be. We go with December 4th. And if we need to this hold a special meeting. And if we need to hold a December 18th meeting, we just will. Hopefully yeah. we can discourage anybody from coming in so, for December. Yeah. So, right with you December 4th. so if anyone comes in for November, you can come to November 4th. Yes, on sir. 4th I make the motion that we continue the hearing for Eight Flood Road to December 4th, 2014 at 7.30 p.m. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your Thanksgiving. Yeah. All right, I got two decisions that need to be written. Mm -hmm. so, accessory dwellings are easy. Oh, no, I'll take the uh, non dwelling. I got four questions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, Bill, you're doing Dogwood, and Sherry, you're doing 94 Goldsmith. Yeah. So, 7.30 on December 4th, right? 7.30 on the 4th. Oh, yeah. I mean, she's violating the sign by law. Oh. Don't have we adjourn the meeting? Nope. Okay. <clears throat> Anybody have any other business? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn the meeting. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you all for your Ready input. For football?